Sometimes as content creators, we do forget that new people come to our channels that are looking for the most basic of care on animals. And sometimes we leave them a little bit behind. So I am starting a brand new series, The Beginner's Guide to Stick Insects, which we will cover various, various topics along the way. And they will all be into a singular playlist, something I'm not very good at doing on my channel. But every single Beginner's Guide to Stick Insect video will have this button appear at some point in the video, which if you were to click on, it would take you to the entire playlist. Now being part one this at the moment will be the only video in there, but keep on watching and keep on checking that playlist for future updates. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly, so if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So in today's video we are going to be covering part one of the beginner's guide to stick insects, which is, are stick insects the pet for me? Now this could potentially be the most vital video of the series and there is quite a lot to cover. I will do it as briefly and simply as I possibly can. So I thought, what's the best way of covering the topics in this video? And I thought, okay, how about beginner questions I had when I was a beginner keeper? All questions I see frequently come up on Facebook groups and other people's YouTube channels and things like that. A lot of very basic beginner questions to do with, are they suitable pets for you? But before we get into that, I think there is something important I need to put out there. And that's a little bit of the jargon to do with names. Now, I will be referring to them as either stick insects or phasmids during this entire series, but they can also be known as walking sticks and stick bugs, among various other things. The order for these insects is actually phasmatodae, which is where the shortened version phasmid comes from, which is quite commonly used within the taxonomists and those who have been in the hobby for quite a long time, like myself. So now we've got that out of the way, let's look at some of these frequently asked questions or statements that I see around the internet. Now, one of the most common questions is probably the most complex question for me to answer that I see come up absolutely everywhere with beginners. And that is, are stick insects easy to keep? Well, I can't actually answer that question for you because it's all species specific. Now, if you guys didn't realize there are literally thousands of different species of stick insect and several hundred of them have actually been cataloged by either the phasmid study group or one of their sister research groups. And not all stick insects need to be kept the same. So it's very important that if you're getting them from a pet shop or an online dealer, that you have the correct name for your stick insects, so you're doing the correct research. For example, the Carassus morosus, the Indian stick insect, practically immortal within the hobby if you're keeping it right. Now these guys are the most simple of simple of stick insects to keep. But if you compared them with something like the H. dilatata, the care is very, very different. If you were to keep an H. dilatata stick insect the same way that you would a C. morosus, likelihood is that animal is going to die. So without trying to confuse you by throwing uh, complex Latin or scientific names at you, I'm gonna try and dull it down a bit. Overall, there are so many different species with so many different care requirements that it is impossible for me to just simply say yes or no. If you go for a beginner species, which we will talk about in a future video, then yes, they are certainly easy to keep, but there are still a few more factors you have to take into place before you make that decision. And that's where we're going to move on to question two, another commonly asked question. Do my stick insects just eat plants from my garden? Something I have seen so, so many times. And to be truthful with you, it depends what you've got in your garden. You have stick insects that will eat bramble. There are vast, vast amounts of stick insects that will eat your bramble, your blackberry bush. You know, it grows everywhere. If you've got lots of blackberry within your either your garden, the local parks, local woodlands, if it's easy to access, then any bramble eating stick insect would be quite easy for you to, to keep. And bramble is easily grown, but they can eat so much of it that simply growing a pot of bramble in your garden may not be enough to cover them. So yes, they can eat plants in your garden, but it depends again on species. You have certain species of stick insect that will take to privet, which is a common hedge here in the UK. Quite often privet eaters will refuse to eat bramble. 
you also get some stick insects that will only eat things like stinging nettles or fire thorn, some that will only eat eucalyptus, especially Australian species. So you really, again, have to make sure you search that species up, whether it's on Google with the Phasmid study group page or you check them out on my channel. You have to make sure what food plants your animal is willing to eat before I can even answer whether you can simply feed them from your garden. But if your question was, can I just give them any old plant? The answer, unfortunately, is no. So moving on to another question, do stick insects require a heat mat? Well, all my stick insects that I keep here in the realm, I keep at the standard room temperature. So I heat my room up when it comes to winter and in summertime, I don't have any heating on at all and all my stick insects still can thrive. But again, just check where your species is from in its natural habitat. There are many species from Malaysia, Thailand and various other places in Southeast Asia. Some species actually come from the US. Some prefer a very dry environment, some prefer a very humid environment, some prefer cooler temperatures and some prefer warmer temperatures. What I can say is there are many, many species in the world that if were left into the UK's climate outside of a house would not survive, but there are also a few that can. And that's why it's very important folks to never release your stick insects into the wild, no matter where you are in the world, unless that species was naturally living in your environment. The next question I often see, do I need a male and female stick insect to have baby stick insects? Again, it's not a question I can simply give a yes or no, because again, it is species specific. You'll see how I keep bringing this up, and that's because a lot of people will just think of stick insects as your bog standard Carassus morosus Indian stick insect. But there are so, so many guys that all work differently. Now, there are species like the Indian stick insect that are parthenogenic, meaning they can produce fertilized ova, and ova is the correct term for a stick insect egg, without the need of a male. In fact, males are so, so rare among the Carassus morosus that most keepers will never, ever see one. There are other species out there that do require a male to fertilize their ova or it will never hatch. And there are also more species that are parthenogenic, but the ova that they produce, although fertilized, will quite often give you weak genetics within their young and it's very hard to keep those young alive especially if this is from a parthenogenic species that has gone generation after generation after generation getting weaker and weaker and weaker genetics over time again with the indian stick insect this doesn't really happen they have very very strong genetics among generation after generation but not all species are the same so again do your research. Another thing you'll be hearing me saying a lot, and on this channel, we're gonna try and discuss as many things as possible, as I've said over time. And also feel free to comment below with any questions you might have. I might even bring your question into a future beginner's guide video. A very important question that I often see as well. Can I or my children handle stick insects? What am I gonna say? Again, species dependent folks. Again, with your Indian stick insect, one I'll be bringing up a lot because it's the most common one in the hobby and the most commonly seen in pet shops. With those, I would say yes. They have no nasty defensive behaviors. They have no secretion that I'm aware of. They will not bite you. They will not hurt you. As long as you handle them with care, then the animal will be perfectly happy within your hands. But do understand, they simply just tolerate you. There is no real bond between stick insect and human. But one thing we do know is they can sometimes adapt to a certain texture of a surface or even potentially a smell. So if you feel that your stick insect comes to you often, that's just because it's got used to the texture or possibly even your scent. But they do not have any actual loving bond with you. Now what's important with the research on handleability of your stick insect is because not all stick insects can be very nice. You get stick insects with very, very strong defensive behaviors. Some have spines along their legs, and if they were to lash out and kick you with those legs, they can actually draw blood. There are some stick insects that have a secretion, and if you were to rub your eyes after holding them, it could be a potential irritant to you and cause a bit of stinging sensation, especially among children who like to put their hands all over their face and in their mouth. Make sure to check out your species and get your children to wash their hands after and before handling any stick insect. 
There are also some sticky insects that have glands just behind the head here and they can actually shoot a spray right at you and some of them have such cracking aim they can quite easily get it in your eyes. Now most of the species to get it in your eyes will have some soreness, some itchiness, wash it out with water and you'll be okay shortly. But there are also specific species that have such a potent spray that they can actually cause temporary blindness in you for a while. Again, wash it out with water. You can seek medical help if you wish to, but the best thing to do when handling these animals is to simply wear goggles. But for most people, unless you've been keeping a while, I wouldn't suggest getting a species that can spray. Another assumption people quite often have is that they can just put stick insects in a tub with some plants and leave them be. Now in a future video, we are actually going to discuss how to set up the correct habitat generally overall and for species specifics in the future. So I'm not gonna go into details here on it here, but I will give you some basic rundowns. Your tank needs to be at least three times the height of your stick insect at all times. So when they're babies, you can have quite a shallow enclosure depending on the size of your stick insect, but they always have to have three times as they grow until they reach adulthood. So in most cases, you are going to need cages or tanks or tubs from anywhere between around 30 centimeters all the way up to 60 centimeters. And in rare occasions, you will need over a hundred centimeter tall enclosures. So again, you have to do your research on your species size. Now, as an example, your Carassus morosus, if you are an Indian stick insect keeper or looking to keep those, then a 30 centimeter tall enclosure is fine. And you need at least twice the length of the stick insect in width. So you have to bear that in mind. They can't just be kept in small tubs. And if they are kept in a smaller environment, they can mismolt and they can die. So make sure to stay tuned for when we discuss housing of stick insects. Another very important one, can I just throw away my stick insect eggs? Now earlier we discussed how it is illegal for you to set them free here in the UK and many other countries. By just throwing their eggs away is also illegal because a lot of eggs can still hatch, especially in our summertime. We are warm enough in our climate for an egg to survive and hatch. Not all the animals may necessarily survive when it comes to winter, but there are certain species that can just about take our temperature. So you will be breaking the law by simply throwing eggs away. If you do not want to continue the production of your stick insects, take the eggs and freeze them first. Once they are frozen, they are now dead and you can just dispose of them in the bin. But while we're talking about reproduction, there is something else I'd like to add. Stick insect eggs, especially the Indian that we've been talking about here, have quite a good success in their hatch rate. And it really is important to dispose of these eggs correctly as discussed, rather than keeping all of them. Because if you had a small colony of Indian stick insects, you could end up with hundreds and then even thousands of stick insects that you will not be able to keep up feeding, that will be overly populated. They will die in that environment. So it is the kindest thing to do to either to send eggs to other people or to freeze them off and just keep the selection of the amount that you want to continue your culture with. Some of you may be thinking, ah, oh, but I could sell these on. Now the stick insect hobby is not as big as many other hobbies out there, such as tarantula keeping or mantis keeping. So if you think you're getting into stick insects for profit, I highly advise you choose a different hobby. I never believe in just raising animals for profit, guys, but if that's the way that you work, stick insects, unless you're keeping very rare and hard to breed species, is probably not the way forward for profit making, just in case that was something in your mind. So after discussing a lot of these questions, you can now think about a few major factors to see if it's right for you to keep them. First of all, is it easy enough to access their food plant as discussed before? Are they simple bramble eaters? Do you have bramble near you? Are they privet eaters? Do you have a privet hedge or is there one close to you? Consider the food plant and make sure you have enough time at least once a week to collect the right amount of food for your animal because their plants do need changing at least weekly in your collection. Secondly, is your animal parthenogenic? Are you gonna end up with an overcrowded cage? Are you willing to kill off eggs? Because not everybody is gonna to wanna to take them off you. Are you willing to do that to keep your numbers down so that your animals are happy and healthy? Also, did you want to handle them or want them as a display species? 
because there are some beautiful, beautiful colorations in certain stick insects that are great to watch, but I would not recommend handling them all. Or are you getting the Indian stick insect and you want your children to be able to hold it? These are things you have to take into account if you want to be a new keeper of stick insects. If you just want them as a display, any animal's fine. If you want them for handling, you have to be species specific. And of course, we discussed tank size. Do you have enough room in your house? Do you have an addictive personality? Because keeping stick insects, especially with some of the more beautiful species, can become quite a, an addictive thing to do. Will you have space for various tanks if you've got that kind of personality? and the food plant gathering, because I can tell you what, with my current collection, it can take me up to five hours to do a local collection of plants and clean out of my animals weekly. And at one time before I had this channel, I was so overrun that it was taking me nearly two days to clean out and feed every stick insect species I used to keep, which is why I have now downsized to a set amount and then I may pass the species on and get a new one so I can still enjoy that current amount over time. These are things you need to bear in mind. So I think I've actually covered as much as I possibly can here in today's video about whether they are right to keep for you. Just ask yourselves the questions that I have answered today and if they've all come out positive, then yes, certainly I think they are the pet for you. If you're a little bit concerned about some of the things I've discussed today, feel free to pop me a comment below and I'll do my best to answer each and every one of you. But it's ultimately up to you. If you can go through this whole video and feel positive at the end of it, give it a go. It's a great hobby to get into. But just bear in mind the factors we have discussed here today. If you found this video useful or informative, please hit me that thumbs up button because I can use this as a way to gauge my audience and see what's working and what isn't for people. If you are not a beginner into keeping or have followed me for a while, do you think this kind of video will benefit the newbies out there in this world? Or if you are new, do you think the educational value of this video was really worth it for you? Obviously there are many, many, many more things that we have to factor in on keeping stick insects but they will come up in the future videos as discussed but as a first for the playlist I think we discussed enough here again comment me below because I really need your research to know which way to send this series and if you want to see what else dwells within the realm guys it's not just stick insects I keep here we have praying mantis we have tarantulas we have predatory beetles we have all sorts of wonderful creepy crawlies here in the collection so if you do want to see what else dwells within the realm make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos and I hope to see you in the next one thanks for watching take care bye bye